players right there as I'm counting up here and big sweet play. Oh, gonna get gonna get number 81 there on the face mask, Tony. For uh, that's Barless. So a penalty there on that one. I just added up in my unofficial stats showing Sherman after the 65 yards of offense ended up with um, 29, I think is what I had. Mm. 29 yards of offense for Sherman in that first half. And that was a, the wrong penalty on my part. That was holding on the offense. That's one of the first mistakes we saw all night out of the Tug Valley offense where they're going backwards rather than towards the end zone. But again... It's a spot of the foul penalty, and it happened down the field, so it's a 10-yard penalty, but they're still only going to be about 2nd and 12, 2nd and 13. They all set. Correction. First and 15 for Tug Valley. Here we go, number four on that wide out. He's going to go up, get past, uh, get up to the original line of scrimmage there. Braxton Hinkle on the reverse. They just kept spreading it out there, Tony, and just eventually ran out of real estate as the Sherman Tide defense closed and um, was able to pinch him, finally get him. This is the f little bit of life here out of the, the Tide defense, although the penalty kind of offset their Second first nine. play, but. You know, they've made a couple good tackles here. Seems like they're shooting the right gaps. May see a different team here in the second half. Yeah, let's see if uh, Sean Elkin got them fired up there. Like I said, to come out with a little bit of intensity here. Let's see, uh, see if they can keep that, the, the tide rolling. And here they go again. Number 85 and 52 for Sherman. 85 is Jacob Doss. Number 85, Jacob Doss. And 52 is actually not on our roster here for Sherman. But number 52, if you're watching this, good Loss job on that Loss. tackle there. Loss Loss of three. For Tug Valley. Following their own 35 yard line. The lights are still not on here at Tug Valley's field, just giving fans an update. And here we go. They're going to go for it on third. Well, it's only third. And Newsom trying to get it out there to in the nice little post route there by Chucky White, the 6'6", as John just said, one of the transfers from Williamson, who decided not to go with the merger to Mingo Central. And I don't blame him. Uh, in a school like Tug Valley, he came here. He, I mean, probably knew he was going to be a starter. And uh, now he's getting a chance to go from single A to double A, same as Mingo Central, with an already established football program. I'm going to say that that was a basketball move, Tony, due to his size. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Williams did have some good athletes last year on that single A squad that went, nearly made the state tournament. They went to the state tournament. Oh, that's right, they did. Good call. And we have a uh, number four bobbled up there for Sherman, Austin Wilkinson. On the reception. Number nine has been the Priest kid, Ryan Priest, I think is what they said. He has been all over the special teams tackles for the Panthers, especially on their punt team. He's earned his gold stars. Two big hits. Yeah, they've been out uh, of Tug Valley's laid, uh, laid the wood a few times tonight. We saw one crackback block. That's probably the biggest hit we've seen so far of our two games. At least the one I was the one sticking out of my head. We saw some good ones last night though too. Sherman getting a little positive yardage there out to the out to the twenty eight. Justin Clark on the run. Justin Clark. Number fifty six, Isaac Parsley. When you talk about that big crack back block, the recipient of that was Caleb Eddy. He made a lot of noise. In the first three or four drives for the Sherman Tide, took that hit and has become a non-factor. We have not called his name since. Here we go. Pass over the middle, and it's picked off by number 11. He's got room over to the right side. 
He's going, he's going to be tackled from behind at the 21. David Runyon with the pick. Also had a touchdown pass, so he's making an impact on both the offensive yeah. and defensive end for the Panthers. Yeah, he had a receiving touchdown. Yeah, you're right, you're right. What would I do without you, man? I'd make so many errant, <laughs> well, errant comments. Well, it's tough up here, you know, it's just two-man wrecking crew. We're trying to run the camera, the sound, and all the stats and everything. Just watching out for you. Thanks, buddy. I got your back, too, even in a fight. Oh, man, we're fighting? If we have to, you man, never know. Tough. You never know. A lot of people want to be WVSN. <laughs> and we have a penalty on the ground. The ball ball is in the backfield. Out to the – went all the way back to the 30. They're at 25. We're going to have a late tag there on number 18 going down and pushing. Who was that who ran the ball there for Tug Val? Was that 11? Was that Runyon? I don't know that Runyon ran that. It was an end around was, botch play. I said it was thirty. Was it thirty-three? Actually, yeah, it was Derek Blevins on that run. Loss of uh. Well, now it's not thirty-three. Thirty-three right here on the sidelines, Tony. Hmm. One of them. <laughs> Sorry, folks. We we'll have to go. We'll have to go to the tape on that yeah. one. But the unsportsmanlike conduct by number eighteen of Sherman, Alan McCormick, costing us. Costin Sherman a first down there after they just had a nice four yard loss on that first play. And you see the sportsmanship here out of both teams is I think it's number fifty two for the Sherman Tide. Lays on the ground. That's the guy that we don't have listed on our roster. But as he went hurt all all sixty or seventy people on each you know, both teams went to a knee. I'd like to see that kind of sportsmanship even in a a one sided affair like it is right now. Unfortunately for uh, 18, who just got that flag, he's got to get over there and sit beside the coach during this time, trying to explain what he was just doing. Probably not the best time as a player to get a personal foul. Mm -mm. Yeah, especially yeah, stopping the clock. You're going to get chewed out. So that's going to mark the ball all the way down to the 13-yard line. Yeah, you don't want this game to get out of control. I mean, especially if it start. We were, you know, wondering that last night. We saw um, a late hit on South South Charleston defend uh, by a South Charleston defender on George Washington, and uh, really that was about the only thing we saw. But we were worried about that last night. You know, when a when two schools like this, you know, you know, regional foes, you know, same vicinity. Um, you know, Tug Valley beat Sherman at Sherman last year, from my understanding. You know, and sometimes as a team, you get tired of losing to the same teams, and sometimes your emotions just get the best of you, especially when you're a young, you're, when you're a young buck like these guys out here. Yeah, a lot of testosterone out on the field, Tony. A lot of um, probably overinflated egos, and I'm not saying that in a bad way. You know, a lot of players tend to think that they are better than what they really are, and that's that's nothing against them. You want to try to be the best, but you know, you combine that and high test testosterone opening night, a lot of factors could go into it, but. A lot of pride, too, I'm guessing, for yeah. your school. You know, you're representing your school, and you don't want to be embarrassed and yeah. stuff like that. So. Well, you got seniors, you know, that's out here, and it's going to be the last first game they ever have. You know, you're going to, you're going to start down that memory road for, for all the seniors that will be hopefully graduating this upcoming May. And here comes the, you know, this is this is what I love most about high school football right here is uh, Sherman Con number 52, the injured player. Um, again, he's not on the roster here on our roster. Being helped off the field by two fellow teammates, number 75, Jacob Perdue, and number 55, Col Colton Farrell. Um, you know, 75, you know, only a freshman, so it's good to see a freshman out there picking up, picking up a fallen comrade on the battlefield. Number 52, he's walking very gingerly, favoring that left leg, it yep. seems. Yeah, he's tweaked something in that left leg, Tony. He's, he's, won't hardly apply any pressure to it as he goes off the field. You'll see in the top right-hand corner of your screen. And uh, Coach Hodge, head coach Hodge here for Tug Valley, talking to both uh, Runyon 
and Derek Blevins, two wide, uh, you know, two playmakers here for Tugs. So let's see if uh, maybe Blevins is going to get the ball here after having a brief converse, uh, conference with his coach. And it's going to be a passing play. He's going to go originally right now. He's going to keep it left, and he's got daylight. Juke move, 10, 5. He's going to be pushed out of bounds at the 3 or 2. Yeah, that's, that's real surprising there, Tony, that Chucky White wasn't in the game. You know, you're in a red zone situation, and you got a guy that, that's literally one foot taller than both corners of uh, the Sherman Tide as he goes 6'6". Six, six. I think the tallest, <laughs> tallest guy they got is 5'6". In the secondary, so... He's entered the game now. Yeah, let's see what what they do here with him. Newsom under center. He's going to there. He is too easy. Chuck White with a little quick slant, two yard slant in there, and he catches the ball for his second touchdown. Reception of the game, third touchdown pass for Mikey Newsom. Yeah, real, real good there, Tony. Little, little quick one step drop, plant the back foot, back foot, I should say, not back feet, back foot, <laughs> and uh, delivered a good strike there on the quick slant. It's the transfer to get yet another receiving touchdown. And here he's going to go for the PAT. The last two have been blocked by Sherman. And laces were not out. <laughs> laces in. Ray Finkel, he go nuts right now. <laughs> right of the field goal post, PAT missed. But uh, at this point, that's going to be minimal um, outcome on this game, as it is now 38 to six. Yeah, seems to be getting out of hand. We talked about it right before halftime, Tony, how the Sherman Todd had to come out, make a statement, starting on defense. Whatever they tweaked in the locker room, Tug Valley, they tweaked them themselves a little bit more, I should say. You know, it's, it's all a chess game of what you're going to do and how you're going to do it. But, man, their their offense flows right through their quarterback, Donald, through the Newsom kid. Oh, yeah, I mean, he's created – he's – I'd say at least four of these big plays Tug Valley's had tonight. At least four. And, I mean, that's a, he's probably had a lot more than that. But just positive plays he's created from negative plays just with his feet and elusiveness and just keeping his feels always glued downfield, uh, even under pressure by uh, Mikey Newsom there. And you can always just tell when there's that one guy that's just got that little bit cut of extra athletic of talent above everybody else on the field. And tonight Mikey Newsom and Tug Valley Panthers have been those players. Not taking anything from Sherman, you know they've you know played their heart and soul, and sometimes when you're just on the road and you just, you just got you got your bad games. It's only week one. You got to you got to figure out what works. Picked up at the ten, and he's going to be dropped at the fifteen. Number four, Justin no Austin Wilkinson, brought down by number eighty, Justin Basden, the freshman, getting down the field making a play on special teams. I always like to see a freshman doing that. Well, that's normally the gateway for them to get on the field offensively or defensively as well, is to make plays on special teams, show the coach the effort. You know, you're willing to run the 70-yard sprint down to make a tackle. We got Justin Baisden, a 5'10 freshman, and then we got another 6'4 freshman named Austin Baisden. If they're brothers, I apologize, Dustin. You got the bad end of that stick, my man. <laughs> six four five nine. <laughs> it's like, man, God, could you at least even it out for me? I'd take six one. Yeah, man, I would. I'd be jealous. <laughs> jealous of the jeans. Yeah, you think you think one hit their growth spurt before the other? Maybe. I mean, it's possible. I mean, if they're even brothers, I mean, I'm guessing there's only differences their the first letter and the first name. But anyway, back to action here, number thirty two. Justin Clark, about a one-yard rush. Yeah, you got to like the personality of the head coach Tyler Hodge as he's on the eve of his first W as a, as a head coach. Kind of grabs Ryan Priest as he comes to the sideline, puts his arm around him, offers a few words of encouragement. Ball on Sherman's 19-yard line. 
Here we go. Now back in the shotgun is Sherman. Hand off to Clark, and he's bottled up at the nine. We're going to call it the, actually, excuse me, make that the, the 15. Wrong yard mark. So it went from second and nine to about third and 12. And again, the negative yards continue to pile up here for Let's Sherman. Noise for our here on third down. Sherman, yet another third and long, Tony. It's been unfortunate. Last six, this will be the seventh drive in a row now where they've faced third and over ten. And now they got the complete pass to 20, but it's going to end. I mean, at least it ends the streak of six consecutive drives and negative yards as they'll be facing a fourth and about a fourth and eight. And you got to make the tough call for head coach Sean Elkins deep in your own territory. You got to punt the ball away. Can't can't give Tug Valley a twenty. You know, starting position on the twenty. You're absolutely right there. I mean, you gotta. You're still not out of it yet. There's still a decent amount of time. It ain't looking good, but you know it's not over. Uh, Tug Valley starters will be back in this next series for sure. Yeah, we saw that last night. We we thought that the head coach Steve Edwards would would pull his guys after they amounted. You know, they got up to about 42 to nothing. Well, they come back out in the third quarter. And I kind of got to thinking about that, Tony. I mean, that's that's probably the right call. You got to get your guys the amount of work in week one. You know, you don't need to come out and start throwing, you know, hail marys and streak patterns. But if you continue to run the football off tackle, I mean, if that's your, that's what, what else can you do? You can't just go back and take a knee, you know, and let the team back in it. So, interesting to see if Hodge, head coach Tyler Hodge, if his philosophy matches up with those of the MSAC coaching staffs uh, like GW Steve Edwards. Uh, actually, a fun fact I heard today, that game last night, I'm surprised I haven't said nothing about this, that was the worst loss in South Charleston history and the biggest margin of victory for in George Washington history last night. Wow. Adds a whole other chapter to that series, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. I think both teams, well, I know South Charleston's trying to move on, and Coach Edwards, he's got to get his boys in check. Be like, listen up, uh, boys, I know you put it on him last night. But there's more to a season than just one game, and not everyone we're going to beat 61 nothing. The punt by Sherman, and it's going to bounce all the way back to the 40. Very dangerous moves there by mm-hmm. Tug Valley. They have two players following the ball down the field when they should be yelling Peter, which is P for poison. Keep away. Nope. Had I been a defender right there, Tony, I would have probably shoved one of the um, one of the receivers into the ball because there's. There's no type of illegal contact play when you get down there. I mean, nobody has the ball to has possession. You know, there's no rights. You were just looking always for an excuse to hit somebody, man. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> definitely, de- definitely had my uh, fair share of crackback blocks and things like that. But yeah, I was uh, <laughs> a little different type player, I guess. I was joking with you, man. I had to bust <laughs> your on the spot there. I didn't really know what to say. Yeah, I heard of your head hunting ways. I've seen the film. <laughs> That's right. Pulled that one on you. You got nowhere to go now, man. Back here in the action, Tug Valley is going to take this ball over here on their own 40. Getting a little little misty down here. We're getting some dew condensation built up here on the equipment as the yep. sun has officially started to uh, has officially gone away for the evening. Next time we see it, everybody will be pumped up because it'll be the weekend. Hope everybody stays safe this weekend or you're traveling. Here we go off the 40, hand off to number 40, Matt Barker. He's going to get seven yards. So that's kind of been the story tonight, Tony. Even when Tug Valley doesn't do something exactly right, it was kind of a mishap there on the handoff. It was kind of extended when Mikey Newsom was trying to give him the ball. You know, it wasn't the, it didn't look natural. But still, they, you know, they dominate up front, and they're still able to gain, you know, seven yards and continue their drive. Yeah, I mean, just when you have botched plays going in for not only positive yardage, but, you know, plus three or four on top of that, you know, that's uh, pretty good. And here we got another long strike. This one complete to Runyon again. His second long completion of the game here from the 48 down to the 16. 
So we got a 36-yard reception right there. 